Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Diabur, and welcome to Valskallen Nights. On this most blessed of evenings, our last game of the year. Before we start getting at everything, I want to go into announcements. I would like to thank D&D Beyond for sponsoring us, helping us with all of our game uh, sheets and everything else with that, and organizing everything because, dear God, life would be a nightmare without it. I'd also like to thank Heath at Lucky Dice Cafe. If you're ever in the Huntsville, Alabama area, please stop by. He's an excellent DM, and he runs the Troubleshooters on Monday. With this being the last game Dire Bear has run throughout the year, I just want to say, in retrospect, I want to thank my players for putting up with my shenanigans. I want them to thank me for putting up with their shenanigans. <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know this is why i decided to send them a letter a little while back and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open them just wait until uh guys just hold on until juju sets everything up okay so just so uh we're all like so showing now. we're all showing all right mm -hmm. guys do the thing open them up Oh, and you do? Oh, take a look at it. Da, da, da. Mine has yeah, not arrived, so kill, everyone though. is aware because what do I do? How do mail I... service. <laughs> Does it have to break? Will it break? Because I don't want it to break. I'll gently I just, like, put my field finger mine. underneath yeah. it. Or you could just use a knife. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I... Well, <laughs> see, I'm banned from knives. Look at this. Oh. Okay. I got it open. Oh, it's Ooh. leather. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> this is going good. on my desk. Oh, it smells good. Yeah. It smells like. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Must smell like This is a, a Christmas yeah. gift then. <laughs> Juju, check your messages. Oh. Okay. Uh... I think there's also. Something else. There is a letter. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I love the smell. Of leather. It's 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 the most primal thing you can ever smell, right? You smell <laughs> it, you're just like, oh, hunt, kill, protect family. <laughs> oh my god, it's so long. I <laughs> wait. Are we are we reading it out loud? No, you don't have to read it out loud. Because <laughs> you'll oh, well, I got one. Soon, you'll soon figure it out that I can I suck at reading out loud, but I will do it gladly if you want if you're fine with information being shared. I don't know what's on here though. It's <laughs> up to you if you want to share, you are not required. I will share, but anybody else wanna go first? It's like class. I, and, and you I can go first. Alright. I'm so giddy. <laughs> <laughs> JT had to message me mine because, again, <sighs> mail service okay. problems. Yeah. It's been lost twice. Um, Thanks, Florida. <laughs> or USPS in general. Um, Josh, bad juju. Although a timid sounding and looking man, underneath lays a wise and vastly intelligent man. Getting to know you as a friend and player has been a privilege of mine. Seeing the unlimited potential of Howard and Halstarian working together, combining spells, interacting with the world, and carving your own path into it. I am so proud to be a witness to it. I've heard horror stories from other dungeon masters that their players are assholes or cause destruction for the sake of it. I have truly lucked out by asking you, Sarah, to join me. To push and create a world that you would enjoy. I see great potential in you crafting a well-rounded character and arcanist in Howard. Goose will leave his mark on False Gala, but I do have to ask you one question. Do you dare to imagine? <laughs> Love your brother and friend, JT. Postscript. Please enjoy the leather coaster I made you to represent your class. <laughs> Except that I can't yet. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, there's a reason why you just can't, I can't just e-card that. 
Mm. There was a the whole Aww. point. So you've had to remake it three times now. <laughs> exactly. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, but I'm gonna express ship it. Uh, yeah. If anybody else would like to, like I said, it is not required if you don't want to. And like Sarah, if you want me to read yours out loud, read I can it. do it too. I would like, read I can, it. I I can. I've got the all the letters. I got right it. Here. Oh, you got so it? I've got this. <laughs> All right, I, I, okay. <laughs> Sorry, just my face hurts. <laughs> All right, uh, Sarah, given, how can something so small leave such an impact on the world? <laughs> Gandalf had once said, you can learn all that there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet after a hundred years, they can still surprise you in a pinch. The Lord of the Rings! <laughs> I love Lord of the Rings so much. There is something to be said to have you unleash spleen on me and the world that I have crafted around you guys. It has been an eye-opening experience to me, learning how to confront a tiny creature that will never back down. I will figure it out eventually, but I want you to know that I love it. Oh. <laughs> spleen has a special place in my heart for she represents for she represents to me the struggle of self-acceptance and willingness to be oneself in the process you will play her so wonderfully you play her so thank you I, I'm, I'm working through it you play her so wonderfully and chaotically putting your whole self into her is the real privilege of mine to witness a honor to watch the both of you and her finding their collective voices in the cruel and harsh world you will never cease to amaze me. You will never not throw me off kilter with your randomness. And how you bring the best roleplay I have ever seen. Oh, what the hell. To a, to a table of players that live and breathe it. I guess that's what little things do. Surprise you. <laughs> never change the core of who you are, dear. You are more than enough. Bring your best self forward and scratch into the <laughs> world. Yeah. Uh, but I have to ask one question. Do you dare to imagine? Love your brother and your friend. JT. I was to script them. You know, I never knew that's what PS stands for. <laughs> that is what it stands for. I didn't know for a long time. Hmm. <laughs> Um, please enjoy the leather coaster I made to represent your class. I hope you enjoy and use it well. What, it's not a scratch and sniff? <laughs> you, can, you can scratch it and sniff it, but I think that's the only reward you're going to get out of it. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. Oh, my goodness. I'm about to tear up. So I'm not... <laughs> we smell the paper. <laughs> you just bite it. I, I like smelling. I thought you were about <laughs> to bite it too. shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sweet. Who's next? I can go. <clears throat> Steve, fun conscious. For a player that said he isn't strong on role playing. You sure took it with Halsterion, as if you were wearing a well-tailored suit. You just took the right character to do it. Halsterion brings out a confidence in you, a relaxed suave, and, of course, your classic wit and charm. Mm -hmm. I always knew you had it in you. I especially like how you interact with the party. Ever since the escorts, I knew I wanted to either be in a game with you or run a game with you in it. My instinct was correct. And you have brought out the best of the others' role playing, uh, as well as bringing in an element to the world that I would never have thought to incorporate. Mm. Having you in my game has been a privilege and an honor. I look forward to throwing your storyline at you and seeing how you react. You haven't disappointed so far. You uh, keep coming back, keep making us all laugh, keep bringing out the best of everyone around you. This campaign would not be fantastic without you. Mm -hmm. I do have to ask you one question, though. Do you dare to imagine? <laughs> Love your brother and friend, JT. Thank you. And, and this coaster is 
gorgeous too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so awesome. I love your leather working. It's so oh, mom gold. <laughs> Thank you. All right, my turn. If mm -hmm. you so desire, like you said, it's not. Uh, it's not mandatory. Yeah, that's fine. In my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. I'm I'm kidding. <laughs> I knew you were doing. I knew you were quoting Silent Hill as soon as you said. I'm like, that's not what I wrote. What? <laughs> Wait. Press any key All to right. continue. Wait. Press any key to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Naruto. <laughs> it really says that. I'm not kidding around. <laughs> <laughs> Having a player in any game that hasn't had much experience in Dungeons and Dragons is the biggest blessing any dungeon master can ask for. You bring fresh and new ideas to the table, things I would never be able to concoct and utilize. To do such things with your confidence is awe-inspiring. Bryony being the cottagecore druid she is, is a real asset in my eyes. Perfectly weird, innocent to many things, and creates chaos wherever possible. I am happy to have met you at Andrea's party. I always had a good feeling about you. It was good that my instincts were correct, because without Bryony in the group, there wouldn't be much of a soul and heart to it. The group would not be the group without you. You are going to bring so much to the table in this upcoming game. I look forward and can't wait to see how you react to your story. Never lose the sense of you while playing Bryony. Combine your spells with Howard and Halsterion. Roleplay like a boss with Spleen. Eat all the pastries. <laughs> but I do have to ask you a question. Do you dare to imagine? Love, your friend and brother, JT. P.S. Please enjoy the leather coaster I made to represent your class. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. It, um, I hope no one saw it accidentally got a false eyelash stuck to it just now. Oh. <laughs> <It's class. laughs> that, that is quintessential you, and I'm living for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. This is even more beautiful and sweet than I expected, and I was definitely something very impressive from you. <laughs> and you a DM who sends you letters with, like, wax seals. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was... I oh my! I got so many questions from my family. Like, what's that? I'm like, oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the best. You're like, the best part. That's you don't... so cool. I'm like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's the coolest. You wish you had one. <laughs> 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 it's it's just so pretty. I just want to like kind of eat it, but like I know I should not do that. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I mean, I'd probably just have to send you another one. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I don't it's know, just, the wax is just so pretty. Mr. We Mr. Reed, I ate your wax seal. <laughs> I ate it, and now it's, I can't, I can't floss it out. It's just stuck in all my teeth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. I love it. Well, thank Alrighty. you. Alrighty. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank what? you for being amazing players. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but with that, thumbs down to the start of the game. Um, Mr. Steve, if you wish to stay around, you are more than welcome. I know you're not up for playing, so leave at your own uh, desire. It's okay, my friend. Thank you. I, I am going to pop off, but I'll I'll be... Piping in every once in a while with a comment or something. I hope I just, you feel better. Sure, I'm yeah. awake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, right, Steve. Every, everybody in chat, say goodbye to Mr. Steve. Bye. Thank you, Bristol. Bye. Bye, Bye. Have fun, you guys. We will. You too. <laughs> and with that, let's start with tonight's game. Previously on False Call and Nights. What did you guys do? <laughs> Chaos. Well. <laughs> um, I know that I. Yeah. 
<laughs> went up against a crime lord. <laughs> you don't know. I'll. I, don't I know. got it from here. Previously, the hunters of evils and monsters. Them. <laughs> I will regret ever giving you that guy that name. <laughs> <laughs> But it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. They were on their way to the capital city of Anver, but after spotting a symbol on the wall that was sealed to a letter, lean. The group investigated it, coming to realizing that they were already in a trap set for Being beckoned by a silent, drowish man and his crew. Being brought into the sewer, led into a maze of tunnels, eventually being brought to a cellar where the leader of the rats Gamma gang Gelvin Clevis offered Spleen a job with her fighting back and refusing to offer she was left with a warning this won't be the last time we meet but with the group now heading to on Ver heading and seeing Elris one last time before you go the group was led into an arcan arcanum underneath the capitol building in Menestet. With all the magical wonders and glory to behold. <clears throat> they went into the teleportation circle and found themselves in the middle of a void. Now we'll start. As you guys feel yourself apparate right into the middle of a, another room, exact in the exact same layout as it was in Menestad. I think it worked. Is this the first time Hal and Howard have been teleported? This way. Um. Yeah. Teleportation is quite an expensive endeavor and only meant for the few that are really important. So Howard's just coming out of it like, whoa! That felt really weird. Yep. Leaves on the ground on her hands and knees like, ah! May, ah! Make, a, make a constitution saving throw, everybody. <laughs> oh. oh, crap. I don't have my dice out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm if you don't mind, you. Hey, I was I, really going to remind everyone about the dice before, I grabbed before the session, and then I figured you all have them. You're smarter than me. <laughs> I have epoxy stuff all over my desk instead. I actually have mine. And I unfortunately have a 21. 21? We'll wait till everybody else says their things. Nope. 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 Mm. I no, got a five. Come. You got a five? That's, okay. that's pretty good. I used the, the cursed dice again. You, why? Why do you do this? Because <laughs> it's cute. It's pink and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking it'll do me right this time. It's cute, but deadly. It it's, always, it's, it's always a lie. It's, uh, uh, it's that's a 18. Poison. 18? Yes. <clears throat> Everybody, for the first time that you actually get teleported... Spleen, uh, Howard, Halsterian. Actually, I'll go for Hal. Okay. Bryony and Halsterian. You feel this churning in your gut. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you immediately have the urge to throw up. And you do so. Uh -huh. And on that note, before I forget, Traz gave us a party boon while we were in the middle of the letters. Mm. Oh. What'd we get? Uh, I can oh. roll it real quick and tell you. Roll it. <clears throat> it's, uh... Thank you, Traz. Five is advantage on your next stealth check. Ooh. Ooh. That'll come in handy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. As Bryony and Hal Starian are both cur curled over and hurling, you guys look over and you realize you are in a different spot. Even though the room layout is the same, it looks different. There's lots of shelves everywhere. It's an eight. It's eight. It's uh like eight 
sided room or like eight divided room so it kind of leads into one center section which is where the teleportation circles and then it branches right off into eight different sides each one of them has a distinctive mark on it and howard you immediately recognize each of these to be the schools of arcanum hmm is there anyone there to greet us or anything? There is. Okay. She starts walking up to you, this half-elf female. Pointed cheekbone, soft hazel eyes, dirty blonde hair, and, you know, a half-up ponytail. She comes in and she's wearing classic guild, guild uh, the arcane school. Mm -hmm. Like the blues. And she... Uh, she comes up. Ah, there you are. We were expecting you. I'm the only one working down here right now, so please, follow me out. Unless you have any questions. Uh, just... Who are you? Ah. I'm, uh, I'm Master Summoner Aurilla Relis Relisis. Jesus, why did I have to... <laughs> <laughs> what a... You named them! Aurelia. Aurela. Aurela. O R or O R I L A. Relsis. R E L S Y S. Okay. Master Summoner. Mm -hmm. Judging by your attire and. Oh, you have killed a guilt seal affixed to you guys. Right. Okay. So guild business. Follow me, please. We have to clean that up. Pointing at the puke. She snaps her fingers, and you start immediately seeing the the leftover mess just dissolve and fizzle away. Wow. Hey. They probably have people do that every now and then, Spleen. So they're prepared. It's, it's way more common than you think. Teleportation tends to jostle everything up, and a lot of people don't like to eat before they do that. I can see why now. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised you survived yours. But that's okay. Let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. As she turns around, she starts following you out. <laughs> I forget. I don't know how to change it. <laughs> She's leading you out, and it's the same kind of corridor lined with a bunch of different potions of different colors, sizes. And I mean, if you wanted to stay here and take a look at them, you could, but you'd probably get a couple of really big stink eyes. <laughs> we'll we'll um, keep following, or at least I will keep following to not, you know, cause any problems. <laughs> Yes. And as you guys are walking uh, through one of the main central hallways, you come up to like a section where there was kind of like a viewing window and whatnot, and you notice there's a caged elemental right there, and it's like in full blown armor, there's a sword, and it's trying to scream, but it keeps getting silenced. And it's looking at you guys, and it's just dead staring. Uh, Orila. <clears throat> yeah, Orila looks over and... Ah, yes. We caught that one during the attacks a couple a week ago. It took a couple of uh, info, allures and coaxers to uh, try and get them to calm down. We're currently studying it. Blaine's gonna just do just straight up like doing some terrible movements and, and mocking it on the other side. I guess they only any sort of thing to offend the elemental. As we're walking, um, Hal and I are stumbling a few steps behind. I pull some ginger root out of my bag and start chewing on it and hand some to him like gum. Yeah. And he's like, oh, thank you. For the tummy. <laughs> Charm. Just like... The elemental is going absolutely crazy. And Arila, 
really looks at you. You know, it hasn't reacted like this at all to anybody. The fact that it's doing it to you guys. Have you fought one of these before? We've killed a few over the last week or two. As soon as you say that, her hazel eyes just blink, deadlock right into you. They're very difficult to take down. Ice works well on them. We figured that much. We're trying to figure out what else they can do. Yeah. I know we have a fair amount of information, but honestly, we don't know too much about them, especially ones with armor on them. We haven't seen any like that. Hmm. So you must you must have been marked by them, one of them then. Or do you carry something that drives it crazy? We have a spleen. I don't remember who has the bracers. Uh I thought you had the bracers. Did uh, I? Mr. Howard? It was either you or House Darren. I think okay. Hal does. Yeah, I don't know. It's not in my inventory, so I'm going to say Hal does. Okay. Yeah, Hal turns around. Oh, uh, have these bracers right here. We also have a diary full of information on these. She looks at you. Really? You have more information? We haven't been able to find anything. This... Can I see them? I can make you a copy. I thought you already made a copy. The one that we gave to the mayor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even better. I would like I would like any information that you would do have, especially if you got these bracers right here. She's looking them over. Oh, Ignan. Interesting. Are these? And then she starts studying them over, and I was like, "These are they? Are these binding runes? Or no, it can't be." We think so. We or think someone was trying to bind the first one we ran into, and well, there was a pile of ash next to those bracers, so probably didn't go so well. I mean, trying to bind. Pure chaos is insanity. You can do it if you're just insane enough, but, uh... Yeah. You can try. <laughs> she doesn't well, mean you, Spleen. Well, you do realize I am a Master Summoner. I can do these things. Well, I'm a Master Debater, so... You can... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, Howard, when I... When I say Master Summoner, she actually, like, out of this, out of this, out of the, the, the arcane trees of, like, actual summoning elemental beings or any sort of, like, fake creatures or any sort of just invoking another creature from another realm to come through. Mm -hmm. A Master Summoner is actually top of the class. The other two ranks are Alurist and Coaxer. Okay. So an Allurist is just first rank, Coaxer is a second rank, and then the Master Summoner. There's a Coaxer, is there a Pepsier? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it's only Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, yes. Even better, God yes. your drink. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go a little more more, more north, it's a, it's a Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Right, Mountain Dew. <laughs> and so this elemental is still just freaking out, trying to break its bindings that are on it. It just... I'm not comfortable, so mage armor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's... We have... We have bindings on it. It won't go anywhere. That's the hope. Nothing has broken my bindings yet. I don't plan on losing that streak. 
No one should. Anyway, I would, if you can make a copy of that, I would absolutely love to see the information that you have on them. Do you mind if I keep these bracers? I don't know. I'd leave that up to Hal, because I have, I don't know. Uh, no, dear. We want them. We found them. We're going to study them ourselves if we do so desire. All right. All right. All right. And she hands, hands the bracers back. I figure it'll let all you guys decide that before I try and take an item away from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Hal had anything planned with it. That's why I say. Mm. Yeah. Is he not still here? No, he's not in voice oh. anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I didn't know uh, if he was still um, listening in on the game. Maybe. Not sure. Uh, we haven't. I haven't seen anything pop up in the chat, so we'll uh, we'll keep on going. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Yeah. If we change our mind, we can bring it back. Yeah. Yep. So, you guys. She turns around. All right then. Please follow me. And she leads you out, opening up a giant set of doors like it was back in Menestad. It's eerily laid out the same way. Hmm. But opening up the doors, more hallways, and it's the, the design is much different than what you'd experience. It's not... It is very much elven, but there's a lot of human human design styles into this castle. As if it were built built in tandem okay and you guys just keep moving forward seeing a bunch of different people walking back and forth a bunch of elves dwarves a few gnomish people and you see dragonborns here and there you also see more warforged walking about and it's not uncommon but it's a fair rare sight to see a bunch conglomerate together <clears throat> you guys eventually make it to the foyer the foyer you walk you open up the main doors to lead back outside and this as soon as you do, you led right into a courtyard, a giant garden section. As you do, you're overlooking the city of Onver. On top of a hill stands a castle. On obvious, obvious elven designs, but with human nuances built into it. So a lot of, like, buttresses, uh, you know, more towers than anything very like hard lines in the middle of this flowing flowing design display as you do you see you look at the castle you turn around you see one giant river flowing right through what would be the center of town walled a giant walled city on the on the other side of the river you notice it to be very more run down and very chaotic in its building designs. As if it was just the infrastructure was more or less the Wild West and you just... You built where you please and be damned the consequences. Howard, you are home. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you guys do? You have the brain of the city. How? You... Do you need to go see family in private first? How looks at you. Ponders in his head a bit. You know, yes, I do. I think meeting my, uh, meeting the Lord is much more of a private affair. Understandable. Oh, I see your life givers. 
<laughs> in due time. But I feel like I need to go and do this by myself for now. I'll meet you at the guild uh, office later. Sure. Perfect. I'll see you then. Tonight? Tonight. Right. It turns around, flourishes, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I get you just justice, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a suave dookie head kid. Man. I don't think I've ever heard those in tandem to describe something before. Interesting description, Spleen. Can you say something? Nope. Hello? Yes. Oh. Oh, I think she froze. Oh, no. You are frozen. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we, can yes, we can. But you seem to be frozen with a smile. <laughs> it's a really cute smile. Yeah. It was like a, it's a cute smile, but I think it was because she was munching on something. She was like, hmm? Can you hear us? It uh, disconnected me for some reason. I'm gonna try to. I'm in the call now, correct? You are. Yes. Call. Yes. Okay. To try to get back into the Zoom. You're still in Zoom on our end. But you're frozen. Yeah. We love technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you, we technology. <laughs> We I also would like it. to thank D and D Beyond for being an excellent service and never breaking. <laughs> the only technology we're fine with. <laughs> I want them to be my D and D overlords. Yes. <laughs> I I just love all the little customizations you could do with your character sheet. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Give it a little personal flair. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, alrighty. Is it letting you back in? Oh. Hmm. Bryony? Uh oh. Oh, we might have lost her. Am I back? Oh. oh. I we hear we you, but hear you. Uh, I'm gonna uh I'm going to try to get back into Zoom, but it's not, um, it wouldn't let me the past two times I tried. It might be because mm. it thinks you're already in. Um, you might want to just try restarting. I don't know why it thinks that. It disconnected me. Yeah. Oh, tech. Oh. <laughs> and she's in the waiting room while not actually being gone. Do we have a ghost? A ghost of me. We have two. There, there are two Ooh, of you in just... chat. All right, oh. that's gonna screw up Cam's. Give you just a sec. Oh God, uh, can we kick the other one? It's my evil clone. Oh no! You kicked the wrong one. I did. They have <laughs> yeah, the same name. The <laughs> I'll change my name. The, uh, the we want to thank Boruto. everybody for Boruto. Let me remove this oh, one now. Not... And now join in. Oh, man. Welcome to the chaos that is our show. Musical cameras. That's what we're doing. Yeah. That was a lot. You are unable to rejoin this meeting because you were previously removed by the host. It won't let me back in because you removed me. Oh, no. All right. We want to okay, take a short take break. A and I'll restart the call. <laughs> this is chaos. <laughs> All right. We're going to go on break for just a couple of minutes and we'll be back. Oh my God. <laughs>
Convenient. It kept everything set up correctly. <laughs> Chaos resolved. <laughs> Chaos resolved. Now back to your regularly scheduled chaos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are we on the internet? Yes. We're still, so we're live. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I want to hear the words we are live for me to jump back into things. Noted for the future. And yes, Steve, yeah. mischief managed. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, he leaves, leaves the show. <laughs> And everything just goes wrong. And it all just goes to shit. God, our, Steve is our warlock patron. Technology is he, revolting because he left. Patron. Yeah, he's he's a techno warlock. He's like, if I'm not allowed to play, neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> Casting my hacking magic. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I was about to say, the sound effects, I think, really sells it. <laughs> <laughs> but the bass is So, low. with Hal going to meet up with his family, Bryony, do you want us to go check out, see what we can learn about that disease? Yes, yes, I would like to. That was in the slums, right? Yeah, that's what you had heard, but you're not too sure what, where it is, what's going on, whatnot. So Just remind to... me, where were we at? Were we still in the building? No, you guys are outside. You're in the courtyard, the front right. courtyard, right in front of the main, the main doors. Are there any guards or anyone who looks like they could direct us nearby? Any signs you definitely or anything? See, you definitely see a bunch of guards around doing the regular patrols and they're wearing their, their black gear. Wearing their black gear, just regular pseudo plate mail. Um, have any more on that disease? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. So we'll... We'll go... I assume you'll bring it up in your narration. Pretty much. Find some, um... We'll go get some directions and head towards the slums. Learn more about everything going on there. Yeah. For sure. And beckoning a guard is very easy. They're few and far. There are plenty around, basically. You, wa you walk up and you see this guy you see this human male average height and kind of really scrawny just how did he ever get a guard position you really don't know but you know it's people come in all sh different shapes and sizes wearing wearing a full helm you don't really see any of the facial features underneath except for his eyes which are nice brown it's like a nice chocolate pudding in his eyes <laughs> <laughs> Little And he notices you guys walking up and kind of pseudo slaps his uh, patrol partner with him. All right, what? Hi, how can I help you? Your eyes are like pudding. <laughs> Mom used to tell me that. But, uh, how can I help you? <laughs> Over here to see sick people. Uh, sick people? Well, I mean, you can go to the hospital. A disease. How are <laughs> We heard there was a disease running rampant. Came up from the south. I didn't really hear much about disease, but, um, I mean, if you want to go see the Soul Weavers, they, they kind of know everything. We're looking and, for them, too, actually, so that, that works out. And you know where their, uh, when he says that, you know where their headquarters is. It's basically a hospital, like hospital administration building out in the old town. 
So it's uh you know exactly where you're going. You just you know, asking the question to make sure that you know you're going in the right connection. Okay. Oh, so like to the oh, so we can like mutilate two birds with our hands. Close enough, yes. Three rights, a left, and straight. Got it. <laughs> uh, all right, well, uh, as you were a citizen, he <laughs> just turns around and starts walking with his buddy again. Bye, pudding. Ah. <laughs> uh. And so you guys do follow the path down. You, it's down a winding path past court, courtyards, and you realize this is just a giant park area right in front of the castle, and it's leading down and leads into this nice parkade. And there's a lot of people out hanging, being about, although you get the sense that there's a bit of fear in the air, given what you've heard. But generally, it's kind of a laxed environment. Especially... And... As you're walking through this park, it's the smells of <clears throat> the smells of flower. There's pine trees everywhere, a bit of maple, some birches. Nice, nice, well maintained paths. You're following it all the way through, and it's it's rather nice and serene given the amount of stuff that you guys have been through in the last couple weeks. Technically, it's been like three weeks. You guys all have been together. <laughs> and so eventually it leads right up to a main road beautiful cobblestone and across from the park you see ashhorn's hollow which is the rich district of town but howard this is where you had actually had gone to school is within this district so you're well versed with a lot of the the streets in there because the the academy is in there mm -hmm. and immediately you turn a right and you're heading right across right across the town i will pull up the map did i did i not put this in oh i guess i didn't oh i have a map prepared but i didn't uh, actually put it in to roll 20. okay you don't have to share your secrets <laughs> if oh, I'm... Your secrets <laughs> actually if you just paste it into Discord, <laughs> I can open it up in the browser and we can swap to the combat menu, t combat screen, and show people it. I can oh. just show them the image. Oh. Oh. Wow. 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 Not in that time. Wow. <laughs> That wow from the anime fairy tale. Wow! Oh, God. <laughs> Everybody uses that sound, and it's just, to me, it's overdone, but whatever. <laughs> to each them owns. Them own. Mm. Oh. Alright, so let me know when you got it up. It is up. It's a Perfect. big river. Holy crap, you weren't kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I see. You guys end up following this nice, beautiful cobblestone. The best way I can describe it is basically what downtown London would look like right now. London, uh, London, England, where right by the Thames, how everything is kind of built up and absolutely fancy. You see shops, and people are still bustling around. Is you know, people got to work and people got to do. And so you, you notice some street vendors yelling their wares or their foods. And you end up getting right to the one main bridge that separates <clears throat> that separates the city in half. Mm -hmm. And you meet as you're crossing it, you notice a plaque there. And 
but everybody knows this bridge as uh, Solemn Lilac's Last Stand. Or they usually just call it Lilac's Bridge. Hmm. You guys walk across it, and it's these... And it's just... Ooh! I'm on a roll. <laughs> you, the bridge is comprised of lots of granite that has been specifically placed into this river to create this giant connection between two points, one of an old one of old town, which is where you're heading, and of where Ashhorn's Hollow, East Gate, and Wealth Castle on Ver is. You eventually get across and you know that the guild is the guild uh, building is literally right around the corner from here. But if you need to get to uh, the Soul Weavers Consortium, they are a little bit further in town. So I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have any reason to check in at the guild, did we? No, so. you haven't. You haven't been summoned or whatnot. Then we could just go to the Soul Weavers Consortium if no one has anywhere else they need to stop. You guys, you guys, uh, you guys are saying this as you're walking right by, uh, right by it, and it's this giant mansion, this giant mansion-looking building, and open gates, open gates, and just like a knee-high, knee-high fence or like a chest-high fence with pickets and everything it looks kind of like a in uh, an institution or an insanitary sanatorium whatever it is sanatorium there you go just brick buildings oh man my descriptions are off tonight <laughs> you're doing great <laughs> but with that you guys keep on walking. And eventually you guys will start weaving through the town. And this town looks and feels very, very old. It feels like an original settlement. I'm seeing wood buildings, brick buildings. You see a little bit of... You see a couple huts here and there. You do walk through a couple of slum, slumish sections. But from your experience of being here, Howard, this is nowhere near where old how bad old town could actually get but this is definitely the working class area of town the people here come to work and they live here but you you smell the forges the smithies the bakers it's still the standard affair you just everybody needs to work there's industry here Gotta make a living. And, yeah. Eventually you do make it to the hospital. And it's kind of like your classic hospital, really, where there's this, this giant square building. There really isn't much decor to it at all. And you do see on it the Soul Weavers Consortium and a couple of side buildings off to the side. And you see administration up top. Yeah, at the top. And all these people are... There's a bunch of people around kind of walking in and out. And you see a whole bunch of them covering their mouths with, like, handkerchiefs. Thinking that it might actually help with any sort of disease or whatnot. But, you know, placebo effect is a placebo effect. Mm -hmm. And the smell in the air is just smells of grime. Yep. It, the smell of grime is in the air and it's not very pleasant but you see that there's a lot of a lot of sick people around eventually making it up to the front door uh, the front doors you open it up and you're me immediately greeted with a secretary and she's looking up at you and this is this it's just this young human woman looks 
to be in her early 20s and you know very black hair very black hair she looks up at you and then you've got piercing black eyes as well and looking up uh do you have an appointment or are you here for any sort of emergency no emergency really um We're just looking to learn more about the disease going around. Trolls oh, so you want to help? You, you want to help a troll's bane then? Yes. Uh, okay, Steve. Uh, yeah, you guys are in the main hospital care building. I would, if anything, you would want to go speak with the people inside of administration. They'll point you in the right direction if you they want to help. Right. Okay. Specifically yeah. looking for an Alibel. Oh, you're looking for Alibel. All right, I see. Uh, she's currently in the she's currently in the surgery right now, but uh, oh. it it's a standard procedure. What's going on? It's okay. But uh, if you wish, we could bring you out to the observation room, and you can watch her do what she does. Anyone have any qualms with that? Uh, no. Let's go watch some surgery. Oh, please. Uh, actually, it's not. Uh, it's not anything like that. There's no blood or gore or anything. That's why I'm more than willing oh, to what? Actually, thank you out there. Aww. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> gore whores, the whole lot of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then she looks over and calls to one of the security guys. Can you take her, take these guys to go see Alabama? And this guy, this troll-looking fellow, like this really big, rotund, muscular being. And normally, like you think of a troll and you think of like this giant thing, but this person is actually quite small compared to what a a troll is. So you're immediately confused by everything with it. He just looks up. Please come with me. He's copying his same walk from behind. <laughs> Weaving in through corridors, you hear the sounds of people in pain, some screams, some cries. You see family members. It, it's very much a hospital. It's an active op hospital, and it's the hospital staff are just running around trying to do their best to keep up with any sort of care or immediate need. Eventually, you get three three rights, two lefts, a couple of good doorways, and secret handshake. Later, you end up getting to the surgery observation room. As soon as you do, you're right up. And like a classic Victorian uh, like observation room, it's very much just, you see in the center this tiny gnomish woman. Nice gray hair, tight bun right at the back. She's wearing, she's wearing complete white robes, but you notice that she has chainmail underneath just from years. And you notice that it, she wears it with ease as if she never actually doesn't feel it anymore. It's just unconscious wear at that point. You see this special designated mark, just a sun. Like a red a red circular red circular circle in the center with seven points sticking out of it. As you do, you notice that there's a, what she's doing is on two separate tables is a set of armor and a person. And this person is actually very... looks like extremely old. Like somebody who's, who's about to hit their hundreds. Just this very weathered, sun-baked person. And as you notice... As you notice, she starts waving her hands, puts her hand over the person, 
starts channeling whatever divinity is coming through to her. You notice that the whatever powers that are channeled through her start slowly wisping off her body. And what you witness is what best described is an orb coming out of the person's body. And you notice that the body starts convulsing, just shaking out of pure shock. Just shaking and back and forth, up and down, and as, as you do... Pardon? It's convulsing. It's convulsing? Yeah. A couple seconds later, and it just finally goes limp, and all of... Make a perception check, all of you. Oh, great it does what oh oh that's a pretty bad actually one. i'm pretty decent on the what the fuck six. i'm thinking of different characters <laughs> well six eleven mm -hmm. eighteen eighteen Brian, you you specifically hear this everyone else you're kind of just watching the display and being overly shocked by what's going on all you hear is it's okay. Your soul will be trans. You will be okay. The disconnection from your body will be okay. And now she brings the orb right to her center whispers a sweet whispers something you do not know what it is and then walks over to the walks over to the armor as she does again uh flares her arms around opens it up and presents the the armor with this blue orb that's right in front of her as she does brings it back slowly pushes it towards and the soul the well soul orb enters the body <laughs> the, 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 the rude sandstorm starts do 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 doing <laughs> <laughs> as that happens you see the armor just just starts shaking and convulsing as if it were the body right beside shaking and convulsing and as it does you hear an audible gasp, or at least you think it's an audible. Just <clears throat> as as that happens, she raises her hand. Now, everybody comes in, stands right beside the armors, and starts holding it down. As the thing starts shaking, absolutely violently and madly. And with precision, she jumps off the stool that she was on, goes around to the head, both hands right on the sides, puts her forehead to the other forehead, and as that happens, you see a giant bright light just... <laughs> silence. Stillness. In the room. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. And then all you hear in the body is, so this is what this feels like. As that happens, everybody lets go. She puts it up. Success. What the fuck? I'm <laughs> at the back of the room. And there were a few other spectators in the crowd, and they start clapping, clapping, and noticing. And you notice that some of these are actually, like, medical students taking notes down and figuring out what's going on. Like, just watching the procedure happen. Hmm. Well, then. Did she just put that person into a body of armor? Without the flesh? 
That's an unfleshed armor. And then she turns around, looks at him. What will you what will you call yourself? This armor finally starts getting up and it it looks very janky. Very much so, but <laughs> very janky and just not able to use the use its limbs just yet. And it looks up. My new name will be Echo. And then Howard finally make the connection. This is how the Warforged are created. Hmm. Interesting. So that's how our friend was made. So you guys are still up there. Mm -hmm. Everybody is now kind of pseudo swarming around the gnomish woman, the older gnomish woman, and so and there's a lot of little commotion, little conundrums, and people over inspecting this now war forged new warforged being that has been brought into this world. Spleen, I think that's how Eckert was born. Ooh. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Spleen doesn't have object permanence. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! <laughs> <laughs> could be the ones you know. <laughs> <gasps> Theories. Well, so. Be... That's cool and all, but like. Hey, <laughs> we got questions. You're saying this up from the mezzanine, just yelling <laughs> down into the pit and like, there's still a bunch of commotion going on. So a lot of your words are not being heard unless you really want to be it to be heard. If that's the case, roll a performance check for me, please. Okay. <laughs> if you want them to be heard. I want to be heard. Ah, oh. well, that's, 12. 12? You start raising your voice and you hear a couple of cracks go in there. Hey, hey, ah! <laughs> as, you, as you do, you see, some, you see some of the medical students that were up in the mezzanine with you just look over being like, hey, shh. You shush. Freaking pencil what? holder. <laughs> She's not wrong. That's hard to think of. That's <laughs> Technically correct. <laughs> so, but people in down in the pit are not. So you got you got the inkling that some of them heard you and they kind of cocked their head, but it was like, okay, this is just random, you know, hooting and hollering from the passer buyers who were just interested to see something that was happening. Hmm. Maybe this will get. That's my dead dad. Hey, right, wait for a reaction. <laughs> Face goes into both hands, and he just hides his. Yep, just face hidden. He looks at him with a shit-eating grin. <laughs> and with that, you you notice that a lot of people are not paying it. <laughs> uh -huh. there's a lot of like class like there's students around it's almost like a class that's going on she's kind of doing instructions and just really focused on what the task is at hand you're not you're not really getting Perfect. any that's fine i embarrassed howard <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like taking your dang like 
crazy friend to your university class because yeah. they don't have a car to go to work. So they have to stay with you until you're done with classes so you can't take them. <laughs> so, and they're just like, do whatever they can to embarrass like you. like a very personal true story. <laughs> 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 so you guys are still up there um and everybody starts kind of moving off into the back room yeah i was gonna say uh which which way did alabelle go is she still in there or is she moving into uh another room uh, she's moving into into another room that's across from the mezzanine. So it's kind of like uh, a wind down zone or like uh, like where the prep area was to do this surgery. Okay. Per se. Um, from where we are, is that in the direction everyone is going or is that... Yeah, uh, you notice that the students and everybody else is following, and especially with the the new armor. Okay, then we. We'll... It's now up and walking, but very like unsteady and unsure with its uh, with its movements. I will just try to usher the two of them along and pretend I do not know spleen. <laughs> <laughs> I move students out of the way, like move fresh meat. The pool's on the ceiling. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh my god. Never been to school. I heard <laughs> this what I could say to them. <laughs> pool's on the roof. <laughs> it's on the ceiling. <laughs> Hilarious. You guys walk out and you walk into the hallway that was adjoining the surgery observation room. Walk and it's like a couple set of stairs. You walk down, immediately take your first left, and you start going to where you think might be the right direction. And overhead, you see, uh, what is it, surgery prep? And you try and walk through the door, and it's locked. Um, can we see her at all? Or are there isn't is there anything any, we like, can see? Okay. There isn't anything that you can see. It's just very much just brick, brick or any sort of stone, stonework with a door right in there, and it's your classic standard door. There isn't other than it's locked. And from in behind, you hear sounds of laughing, some revelry, and whatnot. This school has a lot of hurting people in it. I like it here. There's a there's a lot of fear and the smell of death. Thinking about going to school, Spleen? <laughs> if it's like this, maybe. <laughs> Welcome to the school of pain. <laughs> oh, I'll take you. Thank you, Miss One One Two Three. Um, Howard's what do you guys just do? Howard's just gonna hang out and wait, kind of eyeball what's going on over there. I'm trying to word this, but it does. It's like it sounds. It's a really weird question given the context of what it is. It's like, how long do you wait? That's what it you know, said. that's a good question. Mm. Like, how long is Howard willing to wait? Is the question. Like, no, you're not. Five minutes. <laughs> Five. Five minutes. <laughs> that's our limit. Uh, yep. So <laughs> one minute, two minute, three nothing, three minute. You feel like nothing's happening. You feel like, okay, what's going on? What are we doing? Four minutes. My God, this is mental torture. What are we going to do? <laughs> Five minutes. Spleen is licking the wall. I'm so <laughs> bored. <laughs> oh, we got to hydrate. 
Oh, just give me a second. I need to grab some water. Yes. <laughs> Hydrate with that wall. <laughs> so what did I miss? I think you killed Given. <laughs> 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 yep. Spleen licking the wall. It's okay. That's so dumb, JT. <laughs> I like um, to I like to narrate my own my own <laughs> um, I also totally forgot to mute my microphone. <laughs> Just gonna knock on the door. You knock on the door about ten seconds. You just hear see the door open. Looks like it was one of the med medical students. Um, could I help you? Looking for Alabel? Uh, she's in here, but we're doing post surgery preparation for. The new soul so if you come back in about an hour mm. all right as as you say that and you notice that this like very dark-skinned elf like not so much as like drowish blue but just if a if an elf could have a really nice tan it would be this it's basically the italian of elves <laughs> so that I have a question. Yep. Do I know of any like park or lounge like area where there might be some space that chaos can happen without Spleen getting arrested? Make an intelligence check? <laughs> to the morgue. <laughs> That's, uh, 17. 17? Mm-hmm. I mean, generally, Spleen's level of chaos is most of the times, uh, prime candidates, candidacy for arresting, <laughs> being arrested for. The only, only time you could really get away with any sort of like pure violence or pure chaos would be basically back at the the guild in the fighting pit or the training pit or any sort of the fighting pits in town a lot of mischief and mis uh, mischiefness and whatnot they're very looked down upon especially with uh, the slums being so close it could be easily misconstrued as uh, an attacker, just like an out full out assault on a person. Just take me to like that one corner of the kid, like this kid section in the ho like a hospital. You know where the they have like a toy with the beads that go on the wires. There's all these different colored wires. <laughs> you just move the beads along. Uh huh. Not keep entertained. <laughs> oh, I need an open space. Very you just need open. An op yeah. Height wise, the roof. <laughs> Open space height wise. Uh, I mean, generally in the hospital here, no, there isn't a lot, any a lot of space like that. There is like courtyards out there, and you would walk by open yard space where people are like sitting and lounging, enjoying whatever sort of break they have, like whatever hospital staff is having break or whoever's wants to have a breath of fresh air but there are spaces that are open and green and whatnot but inside the building i mean the closest was kind of that observation uh ob observation area and the surgery pit i'm in favor of finding an open space i don't like this smell and 
It almost smells like formaldehyde. Mm, ammonia. Like, yeah, cabicide. <laughs> yeah. Can we yes. get to the roof? Can you get to the roof? Yeah. You don't know. You climb. Let me just scale the building. How how tall is it? A three stories, give or take. Would judging from it, but like you see three sets of like windows and whatnot. Hmm. We'll go to a courtyard, or or somewhere. Look for a place that's not too crowded. That's uh yeah all right. If Nick, in fact, Nick. how how far is the edge of the city? We're we're the pretty the... into it, aren't we? Uh, all things compared, you're actually closer to the western side of town. So yeah, you're you're pretty much by the western garrison, which is like you're more or less five or six good blocks city blocks okay away so from the west side of town so not terribly far from the gate no let's do this the safe way then let's let's go outside of town what just trust me uh. spleen we have to wait for at least an hour anyway Hey, we just go in now. They're busy. They're doing stuff. Like what? I don't know. Whatever they have to do after the surgery. You want to find out? That'll get us in trouble. You're going to enjoy this. Trust me. I'll just say that's my dead dad. Queen. Come. Please don't say that again. <laughs> uh, but don't you thirst for learning knowledge? Yes, but not the kind that gets me in trouble. Let me rephrase that. Arrested or kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. I don't know. <laughs> oh shit, I would think that's everything you would want to know. What? Uh, Come! <laughs> if you know how to get arrested, you know how not to get arrested. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like pulling a dog that doesn't want to walk on a leash. Just... <laughs> 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 yeah, spleen this world, there exists two types of knowledge the knowledge that gets you arrested and uh, the knowledge that doesn't get you arrested yeah if you know the ones that get you arrested you know what that to do <laughs> come on guys we're learning a crime <laughs> yay <laughs> learning a crime so <laughs> the moment Spleen sets one foot outside of the gate. I'm going to turn to Briny and be like, You were not happy about looking up the last time some chaos happened. Do yourself a favor, don't look up. And... What are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm just gonna poke Spleen on her back and cast Fly. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Hey, Spleen. Okay. I promised you an hour of fun and we have a little bit of time to wait. You have your first ten minutes. Try to fly. <laughs> It's I pulling. like to try to fly oh. into a window. Just, uh, hold on. Let's, let's get mm -hmm. you to this one. Yeah. 
walking through the town, you go, you're weaving through in and out, and you're noticing that a lot of the brick buildings are now starting to turn into more, like, log and not very well-maintained huts and, like, homesteads. And you you see these giant walls. They're about 40 feet tall. And you realize, okay, this is where the Western Gate is, like, where the Western Garrison is, and you, that's where a lot of the, the military personnel stay. They got their own little section just outside the wall. Just to maintain uh, maintain a semblance of order and whatnot, and definitely to check uh, like caravans for whatever contraband, just your standard affair. Mm-hmm. You're walking right up to the western gate, and it's this giant portcullis, classic gate. It's like ironclad gate that's been pulled up. But what you notice is. A he- more heavily fortified uh, outpost. Like you, you've been through here because this is how you got into Onver the first time you ever moved here, into this city. And so, what's going on is you see a backup of caravan, just one way and the other way. People are pissed off. You smell the horse shit everywhere. It's not. You you feel the sense of, like, not dread, but, like, you feel the fear in the air and just the stress of everything. (laughs) People are not happy. You end up walking to the gate, and, like, there's the giant gate that is usually about four or five lanes wide has been reduced to two, just for singular passageways back and forth and there's a, a civilian gate just off to the side and you guys instinctively know to go there because you don't have any of your carts or whatnot with you and there's a little bit of a lineup but about five minutes later you guys make it to one of the guards and you see this dwarvish man just you know chest out head hot held high you you feel the presence of like a commanding person from this small being of a person. He looks up at you. All right, reason reason for leaving. We're just stepping outside for a little bit. We'll be back maybe an hour tops. All right, keep your eyes out. There's been a lot of things uh, happening in this area. So be careful. And he lets you through. And then you make it to the other side, and now hijinks and shenanigans ensue. (laughs) Spleen, you like vultures, right? Have you ever imagined trying to fly alongside them? No, I imagine them actually walking and and running beside me. Yeah, I I actually, yeah, I want to (laughs) fly. Poke. Try flying. As soon as Howard touches your back, you feel this uplifting pressure as if gravity just doesn't take you anymore. And instinctively, you think, how the hell do I do this? But in turn, you just think, and then you just start. You start naturally going. It's not as hard as you think it may be. You you, you start doing a couple tumbles here and there because, you know, orientating mm-hmm. yourself when you're flying mm-hmm. is kind of like, yeah. <laughs> just think about where you want to go. Very much a puppy in space where it's just like. <laughs> you know, ah, okay. <laughs> Upside down skirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lean doesn't have a skirt. <laughs> or, no, yeah, loin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, her. <laughs> you know, that thing hasn't been washed in a while. <laughs> no, but we got her to take a bath recently. 
I know. It was an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You deserve a medal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, uh, for this, because the sheer comedic sake of it all, mm -hmm. make a dexterity oh. check for me, please. Brick. Dexterity check. Oh, that's a really good number. Uh, math. The 21. 21? Oh, okay, cool. So, <laughs> it, it takes you about three minutes for you to figure out... Okay, wait. You start figuring out the orientation. And eventually, you start getting to a point where, okay, you're quite competent enough to do this. You put your right hand out, and you put your right hand in. <laughs> and that's what it is. That's what I want to do. You shake them all about. God, <laughs> I knew you were going with this. <laughs> I just see Spleed swimming through the air. <laughs> Very aggressive. <laughs> like crawling in the air. It's like a CD Projekt Red game where somebody's swimming and it's just through the air. Just... <laughs> Hey, uh, she's like Gmod running in the uh, Minecraft running in the, in the air. <laughs> um, and she okay. Is there anybody walking around? Yeah, there is. There's a lot of people out and about, and like you see that the car the caravans that are being released, they kind of just they're driving and realize. <laughs> I'm gonna go really, really high up, <laughs> so so it's really hard to identify. And she's just gonna, she's just gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> she's a <God>. seagull. <laughs> she's a pigeon. What have I done? <laughs> make um attack roll. <laughs> make it a. Make an attack roll, but it's using your dexterity. Because this is a finesse weapon at this oh point. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's Just... how, so that's so roll. It's a thrown finesse weapon is what this is. Alright. So I roll and then I add just, just there's no proficiency. It's just quite okay. literally roll, add your death. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. Yes. With them just, you're above and them looking up and they're still moving their cart. They're not stopping to watch the thing. You go. And <laughs> it... <laughs> I'm not sorry, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> Howard is just copying I... the notes. I... I... <sighs> After the first two minutes, he's like, she'll get the hang of it. Starts copying notes. <laughs> and then you hear, my leg! No, 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 no. <laughs> Howard, make a dexterity save. Oh, no! I deserve this. Yes! <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. All right, all right. Actually, Briny as well. Oh, no. a, it's a bit windy. Dexterity <laughs> save, that's a 19. <laughs> Dexterity, you said? Yes, yeah, saving. Please tell me I have pressed to digitate today. Oh, no, the face. <laughs> oh, no. I don't! Honey, no. <laughs> Honey, please. I got um, a nine. Oh, no. Luckily enough, you were paying attention to this. And you step out of the way, or at least you think you do, and you get caught with a little bit of the liquid stuff, but that's about it. And it's not a lot, but it's... Yeah, Howard, you, you get out of the way. I... Why do I do this? <laughs> I feel bad because I feel like Bryony gets traumatized every time Howard does some new spell on Spleen. Yep. 
And the You're right. Her. It's the circle yeah. of life. Howard does. Howard does his spleen. Spleen creates chaos in the world. Brian, he gets traumatized. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. I we feel just bad. Say Earth a little on me. Just a just a little. You you you're you're paying attention a bit just to see. Okay, what she's so I am going to immediately cast. Um, where is it? <laughs> Create water. Oh, okay. So and just like um. Do you douse yourself then? Yeah, douse and repeatedly <laughs> like dry. So yeah. it's like I water bend a ball in the air and like douse myself a few times. <laughs> Easily enough, and you've done this cantrip so many, or is it a cantrip or is it a spell? It is a first level spell. First level spell. All right. So, doing the doing the incantation, you immediately like you do, like you do whatever sort of hand signs or whatever like components you pull out. You do that. Water immediately seeps up from the ground, and you hold it up in a cir circular sphere, in a sphere, a sphere, and. You've got good control because it's a first level spell and not a cantrip. You've got very good control over what this water does. So you isolate the areas pretty, pretty damn good. And you wash it out and you just like, you know, let it soak, pull out whatever's there. And so like, do you want to just do it specifically all over your body or do you just want to do the, do to the effective areas? Um, the affected areas, phrasing it delicately. Actually, no, I'm so like freaked out. I'm like douse myself repeatedly in water because I'd rather just... Yeah. To the street dripping wet. All you, you that, hear in the distance like, is just. Howard, <laughs> 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 just oh, so you know, it is I'm a concentration. Literally, I'm literally mm -hmm. the Green Goblin from Spider Man. The girl, just oh my God. <laughs> flying around. Oh my Throwing God. Throwing into the lungs. Throwing <laughs> so this continues on for a little bit. You guys clean yourself up, and eventually this hour goes away, and Spleen's, uh, Spleen's fly eventually drops. Howard, do you tell her that the fly is ending? Nope, not if she's that high. We're just gonna... Try and cast Feather Fall on her before she hits the ground. You know what? Don't try. <laughs> How high uh, up is she? I see you start to know. cast Feather Fall and I like slap her hands. I, I don't. Oh no. I don't. I learned her lesson. I'm gonna die. I, I don't know how high I am at all, actually. Um, uh. I'll tell you what we're doing this. You're flying around, creating, being the chaos that you are, and then you realize... <laughs> I'm going to just fall not gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> Spleen just flapping because suddenly she's not floating anymore. <laughs> I would like to try yeah, to like rage, rage fall. Very much like a Wily e. Coyote Looney Tunes yeah. cartoon. You take 21 points of falling damage. Oh, how do I land? What is that number? I don't know math. Mm hmm? Okay. Sub subtracting. Okay. <laughs> that. Add it. There we go. We're not sinking. We're crushing. <laughs> <laughs> How did I fall? In what position? And what what fell first? Uh, I think you were like uh, head first, like kind of, not <laughs> head first, but like kind of like trying to flap, and then your body kind of naturally just went like starfish down, just mm -hmm. belly flop. Oh, oh my god, I feel it everywhere. <laughs> mm. <She's... laughs> she just lays there for a bit, you just hear... <clears throat> it's 
Spleen, are you okay? Just <laughs> one thumbs up. Sorry, I forgot to tell you there's a ten minute timer on it. No, I did tell you there's ten minutes. Yeah, but you'd never remember that. You in said the, the you owed me an hour. I have to cast it ten minutes at a time. Actually, this goes on for the hour, and you realize that this timing is... You're starting to cut it close to when you could actually meet the person you actually want to. So you try and go back into back into town. You meet the guard, same affair. What are you doing? Why are you in town? But you get more of a thorough search. And they realize that you've got... I mean, you've got your standard affair, money, pouch, and why you're in town. And they see your guild symbols. Realize, okay, gold... <laughs> Gold sealed guild members get a bit of a lax time because they're you know, they're part of the society, mm -hmm. and they don't really okay. ever want to fuck with that. Try to. <laughs> well, while they're searching me, I give them a wink. Go ahead, <laughs> and they get uncomfortable for them. <laughs> they search me. <laughs> these these guards have seen a lot and they don't easily get shaken and you recognize that they're not being shaken by you. Uh, yeah. I eventually like you that. guys eventually you guys get back to the Soul Weavers Consortium, the hospital bit. And as you're you you go right through, you know exactly where you're going. Eventually you see you see that small gnomish woman being followed by a bunch of medical students walking down one of the main hallways as she's doing a pseudo lecture. She's saying, so that is how we create and do the war forging. Unfortunately, only maybe 1% of you will actually be able to do what I do, but that's okay. And you, you see, in the commotion of it all, it kind of you start losing bits of what the lecture is actually about. Yeah, so what do you do? She's like right in the middle of it. Very much so. The crowd starts walking right off. Mm. The crowd starts walking right off and. The, that troll, half-troll bodyguard comes up. You know, you can just follow them, right? You need to speak to them. They do have a classroom. Okay. So... Uh... It's like a, a moving lecture? Sort of like that. Um, do you guys follow? I will, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. You guys start catching up, and she's still going through the spiel of how a lot of that, like the essence weaving that she does, is a very rare skill. And she's kind of just walking through the hospital as it is and pointing out. So this guy has gout, this person this. Like It's just, you know, pointing out the standard of films, but... And she turns around. All right. So that concludes our class and our lesson for today. Uh, remember, take your notes. Ensure everything is happening. And remember, this procedure itself is very, is important. But pre and post operation are very key as well. So what? Take that into consideration. I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Everybody kind of steps off, like, you know, steps off, steps away, notebooks at the side, all of them in their white scrubs, just. Yeah. Dispersing. As you do, you notice that she's already turned around and walking in towards, uh, walking in a direction, and you see signs for uh, main office, main offices. I'm just going to, Give Bryony a small nudge and be like, you want to ask her about the Bane going around? Oh. 
Um, excuse me, ma'am? She... She doesn't hear you right away. It takes you a couple sec. It takes you a couple tries of continue, continually doing that, and then she immediately just uh, yes. How can I help you? Um, we, I had a question. Um, what do you know about the Trolls' Brain outbreak? She looks at you, and. looks at you she looks right up and says well it's we have a ward down by the city that or down by the wharfs where this main outbreak is being held right now but um is there a reason why you're asking me specifically um I'm very nervous talking to her. Howard, help me. <laughs> you seem smart. <laughs> you seem we like were... you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about. So she just wants to ask you some questions. Wait, you're not you smart? Are you the wrong person? Deprived child of her dead dad. My dad's dead. <laughs> so uh, Very dead. Oh, woe, woe is me. Ah. <sighs> Did you see Howard yeah. face pump in the back? <laughs> as <laughs> as Alabel looks at you and realizes, like how nervous you are speaking, she's like, oh, "Honey, honey, come here." And she takes, like, she reaches up and she takes your hand. She's like, "Come, come with me." Okay, let's go. Let's go have a chat in our office. That's my office. Let's go. <laughs> as 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 you guys follow her along in a couple of waves back and forth and. <laughs> As I follow her, I ask, will this affect my final grade? <laughs> no! Are you a part of my classes? I don't know. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. And so, eventually you go into one of her offices and you notice uh, it's a fairly small room. I mean, average size for her, but there are big chairs everywhere, so you get the feeling that she's, you know, she's very much a building administrator, and, like, she is a leader of the consortium, at least appointed for the moment in time. And she, she comes and beckons you. Uh, T? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Uh, any preference? Um, Something calming like. for that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ah, perfect. All right. Turns around. Just you see her doing a magical incantation in the air. Boom. We're gonna have chamomile. Anyway, so I noticed that your guild and you're interested in trolls being. Not a lot of people want to go into that. So I have to ask why. Oh no. Oh, did we lose her? I think she froze. Oh no. Uh. That's okay, because we have multiple things to ask her. Not just Trolls Bane, we... Also, we're wondering if you've seen any bags like this before. You hold up a bag of devouring? Mm-hmm. It's inside out, so I don't know if she's going to recognize it. Uh, that's just a leather bag. You could probably pick those up. Uh, around? Yeah, Show know. her the inside. Oh. Recognize this? Oh, oh. Uh, give me a second. As you do, you notice, uh... Well, you the outside, that she, technically. Yeah. She grabs one of her uh, wrists, shines it up, presses like presses one of the like the runic incantations that are in there, and you notice her eyes just start flaring, just shink, and it shifts into conjuring magic. And realize, oh, oh. 
Where did you get that? Well, one thing at a time. Like I said, we have a few things to ask you. Bryony, are you back? Yes. Okay, you froze on us for a moment. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, weird. Am I back? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. I've heard you guys the whole time. I didn't know I was frozen. Oh, oh. your responses didn't come through then. Oh. But you seem to be fine now. Okay. Okay, so I... I am sorry about that. Hey. No worries. And so, backtrack. What are you... You're interested in Trolls Bay and why? Um... It's more of a personal interest, one could say. What? What? Um, what? What's going on, dear? Please, tell me. He's so comforting. Um, I may or may not know some people who passed away from it not terribly long ago. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. The, how close were they? Uh, well, they were my parents. Oh, and she, you notice that she, like, she gets off her chair and she goes over and she kind of take, takes your hand and does the comforting, like, the very old grandmother comforting thing. As that happens, the tea comes in. It's like, please, please, take the tea. Please, take. Uh, I'm so sorry. But you said this was, uh, weeks ago? How, how many weeks? Or... Um, not weeks. Um, oh gosh. From what we remember, it was probably about a couple years. Yeah, um, a little over a year. Mm hmm Oh. Trollsbane was not found until about... Eight months ago, year. So you've had contact. You could say my living circumstances were somewhat unusual. Mm. Well, I'm glad you're alive, and uh, yeah. Oh, she, she goes back and behind her deck. Well, how about this? And she points back at the the bag of the bowering. I can deal with that, but I need you to help me. I need you to help me out. Okay. So, a lot of war wharf workers were being affected by Trollsbane. We don't know why. I'm trying to get anybody to go in there is uh, not exactly easy, and I don't want to risk any of my people let alone they don't want to risk their own lives they're they're medical medical personnel it doesn't look like it's contagious via person so if you meet anybody who has it it's very much not that it's very it's environmental hmm. so how do we like not get it like if we're gonna do this she's swings leaning on the wall their arms crossed. She's been watching from back of the room. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna do this, like, what keeps us from getting that shit? We have special time. We have specialized masks down at the at the setup, the field hospital down there. You put them on. You can attune to them. You, any environmental effects will not affect you. But they are consortium owned and run, so if you do leave with them, we will have to find you. These are very rare items. Hmm. That's okay. We'd we just need you to take it. Spread by touch. This is. We. We're still trying to figure out a lot of different things, but we've come to the realization that uh, people have come into contact with other people with Trollsbane, and they've never contracted it. 
And it's also weird that it's actually like half orcs and goblins don't get it. Half orcs and goblins. They seem to be immune. How do you know? There are a lot of half orcs and goblins down at the wharfs working. In- None of them have We've seen none. Them. None of them can contract. We've seen half elves, gnome, dwarf, human, tiefling. All every every single one of them except for goblins and half orcs. Hmm. What about people who have survived it? There have been no survivors. The only the, the thing is, we can we can slow it down. We can we can bring it back to the beginning. But no matter what we've done, we've never been able to get rid of it. Well, why don't you just figure out what the orcs and the goblins have that's different? We don't know. Hmm. I'm just sitting in my chair, kind of taking in this. Just give me a sec. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, my spell. I see. Uh, okay, so where were we? Um, goblins, half orcs, never, never get it. We don't know. And because this is so new, we just don't. There's, there's things we do not know and things we do. But we've combined. There are three stages to this illness, this disease, this sickness, whatever it is. First stage is lethargy. People start slowing right down. And about, usually about three to five days later, they slow right down to not being able to move. Or moving very, very slowly. In about a week, maybe two after that, mm-hmm. it's paralyzation and death. We've been trying to use our restoration magics to try and get people to be cured, but no matter how many times we try, it keeps coming back. People start slowing down. People will eventually, like, they're, if you catch it, it's basically a death sentence. But thankfully, we were able to figure out that it was environmental, so we have, we have masks that can help people who are in affected areas, but we don't really know what's going on. This is why I want you guys to help me. Has... And I will put the contract through the guild, and you will be paid from me to do this. Uh, Has anyone wearing these masks contracted it? No. We all wear it as a precaution. How easy are these masks to break? Break? Magically enchanted. They're they're leather, but, you know, they're magically enchanted and they also have... Honestly, I don't know. We haven't really tried. Well, we tend to run into trouble sometimes. That's... That is fair. And if someone I'm... falls and trips and hits their face, looks at Howard. <laughs> what? You yeah. know how sturdy it is. I'll be fine, but these little shits won't. Uh, I'm not too keen on this 
technical specs of any of this. If anything, we do have technicians that would be able to answer all these questions. And, uh, but yeah, so, uh, how's the team? Delicious. So, so what are we doing? If we get there, what are we doing? We just need to know how, what is causing the spread. We, nobody wants to go into these factories. Nobody wants to do these. These things have been shut down. All we need to know is just how. Have there been any... Mm. Is anyone aware of an, of any infestations or or no, I don't know no. nothing at all. But something in the environment is causing us causing it, and they've narrowed it down just to the docks, or it's just the docks right now. Yeah, but Gale Tide's Wharf is where everything is. How do you two feel about this? I don't look at Briny. Honestly, I I need any help I can get. I'll go. You... All right, I'm in. I guess we'll do it then. And you want us to just leave this bag with you in the meantime? Yeah, uh, if you leave that with me, I can deal with that. It's it's rare to find a bag like that around. It's, um, how did you acquire it? Well, uh, there's several of them that are going around in... Ministad right now. Hmm. We're not sure why. Clearly someone with ill intent. A group of someone's it seems. Um, the, they're waiting to get word to you because you've been away. Uh, but they have several of the bags already. They, they've confiscated several of them. They're still trying to track down the remaining ones. This one was delivered to the guild. Hmm. Each of them have been delivered stating that they are a bag of holding. And they were purchased as bags of holding by different individuals. And this is... Information from the Artificer's Triumvirate. And when you say that, and you know that Rigskin's a part of that Triumvirate. Okay. So, yeah, it's so, like, I like, don't remember. He, he was a, he's a part of the, that whole, like, the whole system. Yeah, but, I was thinking of the uh, Consortium. <laughs> yeah, the conglomerate, that's... The conglomerate of the Artificers and the Enchanters and the Alchemists combining together to make sure that um, you know prices are maintained and that any sort of magical item that's free market is traced and tracked at to a point so just to they... know what is out there yeah but it doesn't mean it doesn't stop anybody from doing outside of market stuff it's just a way to try and ensure some sort of order Mm -hmm. because it takes a high level soul essence weaver to combine a soul that was summoned and this is some and she, you, you know you see the wheels going in her head she's like 
this is some really high level shit. <laughs> Did she say that out loud? Yep. Nice. Oh, this grandma don't give no fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like what you did? Cause you're like an armor whisperer. You did that weird shit earlier, my dead dad. I know that's not your dead dad because I met with the family <laughs> in the post-surgery. <laughs> and their dead dad is now living in a new arm. Yeah. So is there like dead people in the back? Like, did he like, or she? Or, or they, I'm not thinking. What? You're talking about soul shit. So, oh. Normally, any sort of corrupted soul doesn't bind anything, bind well to any sort of object, so it's not likely a human or humanoid soul. This is more or less uh, probably a demon. No. Oh, a demon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can deal with that because a soul is a soul, one way or another. It just, uh, I might need a, I might need help with that, but it's okay. Wait. Quite... So, you're gonna wait. What's she gonna do? To it? She's looking at Howard like, whoa, whoa. She's gonna fix it. No, I like it chomping. Do you? I. You I mean. Get to use it yet. I don't, you know, if you want Tell to change, you what. It, change it, it's okay. You guys know what you're doing. You guys do Jeez. magic all the time. You guys study. You Feel free to study it, see if you can, I don't know if you can figure out anything about, I don't know, who might be behind this by studying it without removing the soul. We're missing a party member anyway. They might want to keep it as a bag of devouring. It does have uses. We just have to be careful with it. I mean, given that you guys are willing to give it up means that you're not going to be dicks about it. Eh, he said dick. <laughs> I mean, obviously we're not going to be shoving anyone into it. That's just a terrible oh. idea. Oh, back in my day when I was adventuring like you guys, I... <laughs> we had a couple of people in our group that would have done that. We'd shove people into that kind of a bag. They were kind of hey. cruel people sometimes. But it was, oh, I missed them so much. You know Side glance at people? spleen. Yeah. <laughs> she, now she's, she's on the desk like... You know, we used to call ourselves the Ballbuster Brigade. It was such a good time. What? Yeah. Holy shit. Wait. We all had gone to a port town, and it's been so long. And what had happened was, a guy was picking a fight with us, and I punched him in the balls. I love it. And he got knocked out because of it, and it was great. And it turned out our my other friend, our, our my other friend Tobias, he punched another man in the balls. He was he was a dwarf. I wonder where he is now. That's how we got our name. That's how we got our name. Good time. No. See, I like this one. So don't. When I say, I know my stuff. I know my stuff, Missy. <laughs> well, give them a too big toothy smile back. <laughs> I promise. I won't yeah. put anyone in the bag. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if you guys go do this, I'm going to put a contract out with Crimson Pride. And when you hear Crimson Pride, she's the leader of the guild. And so I'll put a contract out with Crimson Pride. And by the time you get back, you should have thorough payment and all guild invoices ready and signed. All right. Sorry. By the way, what is, uh, what is your group name? Bring the him. Hunters yeah. of monsters and e of evil and monsters. With the me. 
And me. <laughs> me. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's name better. Me. Where's me? Where's me? That's me. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so we're going to need three masks because we got one more. And he's a tiefling. True. I don't have any of the masks. Okay, so you're them. I like that name. I like that name. I like yours better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed the brigade. Yeah. You just see her kind of like the eyes glazing over the reminiscence on her face. And you like you notice that this gnomish woman just like has hard wrinkles on her face of like a hard lived life, but just an absolute glow of grace around her. Yeah. Just pure like happiness and contentness of where she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a nana. Nana banana. Mm -hmm. Nana bananas. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll get everything signed up and rip. Uh, please leave the bag with me. I will get this dealt with appropriately. And there's nothing I can really do about studying it other than we know it's just a soul, like a gluttonous soul that's in it. Nothing that would inform you of anyone? No, no. Unfortunately, you think that everybody would have their own flair of magics, but as soon as everything ends it's just a after effect there's no just telltale the signs or anything end. it's just the same it's only how it's cast is how you can tell but it, other than that it's uh i mean there's a soul in there that's about it well i guess we'll just keep it with us for now then and we'll we'll talk with the other member and see if we want to have it reversed right. um but Maybe. as i said there will be several more that they want you to fix or dispose of properly i'm sure whenever you're you know okay. done with all the work here they'll come to me or my other weavers but we're very much indisposed with what trollsbane's doing right now just trying to maintain what's going on of course but thank you for your time thank you for doing a favor for me yeah, bye, ball buster. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now we'll head out. And you guys head right out. Knowing where the gate tide, or the gale tide, uh, uh, wharf is, because it's basically like one of, it's on one of two sides of the river, and you're on the right side of it. You guys start heading towards it, weaving in and throughout the town, back and forth. And with that comes a little bit of worry of understanding that this disease might be more than what you could chew, or it could be... It's a very scary proposition, but you don't know what's going to go on. And with that... I'm going to end tonight's session. Ow. Quick question before you do. <laughs> yeah. Roughly what time of day is it? Uh, around this time, you guys... It was about sunset when you got there. Yeah, it was probably around 7 o'clock. Because you guys didn't really dilly-dally at we all. We might... So, like, it's not, it's not sunset. It's, like, getting into the dusk times now. So we might, instead of going directly to the wharf, we might go meet up with Hal at the uh, guild first. Yes. Yeah, so then you guys take the appropriate weaving back and forth, and the, still the inner monologue thoughts go on. Yeah. D dread of existential crisis. A ball busting. That's how she's taking it around. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, shit. <laughs> good times but with that i would like to thank everybody who's stayed on and watched uh all of our shenanigans with technical errors and letter opening i hope all of you all had a really good time yeah mm -hmm. i also want to thank D, D beyond for 
sponsoring the show. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. We'd also like to thank Heath at Lucky Dice Cafe in Huntsville, Alabama. If you're ever in that area, please, I implore you to try and have him as a DM because he is fantastic to be a player for. But with that, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. We're getting into the holiday season. I want all of y'all to be safe. And Omicron is out there, so it's, uh, you know... This shit ain't done and ain't going away for a while. So with that, I just want to say social distance, wash your hands, wear your mask, and just... It's been a rough couple years. Just love each other. Please. Please. But with that, I must ask you one question. Do you dare to imagine? Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you next year. Yeah! Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. <laughs> <laughs>